kind of like the... Uh, <laughs> Coming up with a family, and just like the, uh, we have a, <laughs> oh, this is Advent, and uh, the beginning of the Christmas season, or so when we look forward to the Christ child, and it's so nice to have families. Nice to have families here, and the whole family is here. So we're we're just blessed. Thank God for Danny, the family, uh, who light the candle for us. God bless you. But, uh, the little ones don't go. Let's get. Uh, let's have the youth um, the youth choir. Anyone older eighty five? <laughs>
Thanksgiving, and uh, the Lord has blessed us once again. Uh, and as usual, God always provides a family for us. You're always in the family of God. So uh, we want to thank you all for Thanksgiving. Well, let us, uh, first of all, look at the theme for today. As you know, this is the first Sunday of Advent. And our theme for today is keeping alert. Doesn't mean sitting around doing nothing. Please keep on serving others and serving Jesus Christ. Keep on serving others and serving Jesus Christ. Today I'd like to pray for our children and our youth. And today I want to pray particularly for their self-esteem, their biblical self-esteem. Oh God, please help our children and youth to develop a strong self-esteem that is rooted in the realization that they are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. And that comes from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 which reads as follows. For we are God's own handiwork, God's own workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus Born anew that we may do those good works which God predestined or planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living the good life which the prearranged and made, which he prearranged and made ready for us. In which to live. Great God of our lives, for all that is gracious, revealing the image of Jesus Christ, for our daily food and drink, for our homes, our family, and our friends, for minds to think and hearts to love, and hands to serve, for health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play, for all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To you, O God, be praise and glory. We ask once again for your grace and forgiveness. And may your loving kindness move us away from sin and always towards your darling Son, Jesus Christ. We continually give you, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, our praise, our glory and our thanks. Eternal God, we ask your blessings on this congregation here present. Please bless all congregations throughout the world. Bless our families, our friends, our community. Let us know that you are God of all creation. Eternal God, bless each and every one of us as we come to this place to fellowship with sisters and brothers in Christ and as we leave this place to go out into the world to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Be with our communities. Be with all those who govern us. Be with all those soldiers and sailors and airmen across the world who protect us. Eternal God, we ask that you continue to watch over us and watch over our communities. Bless those who serve in any capacity whatsoever. Especially at this time, we remember our teachers, 
remember our professors, you remember our police, fire, uh, sheriffs, all those, the EMS, all those who serve, and help to make our lives good. Bless each and every one of us. Keep us in your perfect will. Let's yes, in Jesus' name, who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
turn with me to in your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 24 of the following. Gospel of Mark, 13, and if you're using the Pew Bibles, it's found on page 51 in the New Testament section. Gospel of Mark, chapter 13. While you're finding it, we, at Advent, it's the beginning of the church year, and uh, we usually divide the church year into three sections, A, B, and C. At Christ the King, which was the end of the last week, uh, Christ the King Sunday, was the end of year A. Today is the first day of year B. And year A, you remember, over the last year, we were in Matthew, year B is in Mark. So we're in the Gospel of Mark. Listen to the Word of God as it comes to you from Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 and following. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as this branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Mm -hmm. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven or the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Watch, therefore. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning, and dawn, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch, be alert, be aware. Please turn with me in the book of First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. 1 Corinthians 1, and if you're using the Pew Bibles, it's found on page 157. 157. 1 Corinthians, the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Listen to the word of God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus. That in every way you were enriched in him with all speech and all knowledge. Even as the testimony that Christ was confirmed among you. So that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the Word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And the words of my lips, of the Meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And this morning, I want to urge 
encourage you to be alert, be awake, keep watch. Be alert, be awake, keep watch. Well, today is the first Sunday of Advent. An Advent, uh, from the Latin Ventus coming, uh, you would know the Advent proclaims the coming of Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago as a baby in Bethlehem. And then it also proclaims the coming of Jesus Christ in that great day of the Lord, when he will come back again. He'll come back in triumph and he will return with all of his angels for that final victory. The Apostle Paul points to the end times, and I just read there, and the coming day of the Lord, urging Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, to faithfully share their spiritual gifts while we have time. In the Gospel of Mark, which I just read, Jesus cautions his followers to be alert, to watch for signs of the end times. There is so much mention that the end times are coming. So much mention that Jesus Christ is coming back. The triumphant return of Jesus Christ and his angels in all of his glory. Mark just told us, he'll come back, watch in the clouds, and you will see him in all the and they will gather all of God's people from all the nations and all the tribes, from the ends of the earth to heaven. Many people approach Advent as the season after Black Friday, a time of preparation for Christmas, waiting for that big day and all the and all the excitement and all the things that go on before Christmas. Advent is the definitive announcement about our future. What will happen? It's the announcement of a time when Jesus Christ will be coming back to claim his kingdom, to set up his kingdom here on earth and to claim it. A time of preparation for that final triumph over death and darkness. And Jesus urges us to be awake, be alert, keep watch. The story is told of a man, and his name was Robert. It was in the city of New York, New York City. It was Christmas Eve, 1932. Christmas Eve, 1932, he went to midnight service, and he was so inspired. And he was on his way back home to his little humble dwelling. And as he walked in that community, there were drunken men everywhere, men lying on the street, drunk. As he passed clubs, they were singing and cussing and swearing and Man drinking up and having a great time for Christmas. He passed private clubs, he passed bars, and men were laughing everywhere and just drinking and having a great time. And being inspired from that service, midnight service, he found an envelope and uh, you would know it's 1932, not everyone was allowed into Harvard and Yale yeah, and those places. But he found an envelope and he was able to write. Fortunately, I don't know how he learned to write, but he did. And he wrote this. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born. In a picture, sweet little holy child, we didn't know who you were. Did 
didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord. To take our sins away. Our eyes was blind. We couldn't see. We didn't know who you are. That's still sung in many churches today. It's a very popular hymn in some churches. Yes, it's true, many who celebrate Christ's birth have no real understanding of who he was. What's more relevant, who Jesus Christ is. Mark paints a picture of a man going away from his home and this man had servants. He was rich enough to have servants. But you know we're talking about Jesus Christ. But he talks about this man who has servants and he, he said he was going away for a while and we know he's gone away for the last 2,000 years. He could come back at any, any moment. And he called the servants and he assigned each one a task. Each one of us has been assigned a special task. And then he said to the doorman, keep watch. For you do not know when the owner or the man will come back. And he's saying, keep watch. We don't know when Jesus Christ will come back. Not even the, not even the son, not even the angels. No one knows the time or the hour. He says, because the man may come back, and if you don't keep watch, he may come back in the evening, or he may come back at midnight, or he may come back at cock crow, or he may come back at the dawn. Remember those four times. He may come back at evening, he may come back at midnight, he may come back at cock crow, or he may come back at the dawn. And each one of these times is important. It was as if Jesus Christ was reading the Gospel of Mark, which we just did. It was as if he knew what was in there, which he does. And we, first of all, we're going to look at each one of those four times. Evening, midnight, cock crow. And all. We're first going to look at evening, which is in Mark 14, 17, and 18. And when it was evening, that's our word. And when it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve apostles. And while they were at the table eating, Jesus said, Surely I say to you, one of you will betray me. One who is eating here with me. And so we wonder if this evening he's talking about is a time of betrayal. A time of betrayal. And I wonder, I ask you the question, I ask myself the question, I know the answer in my case. Have you ever betrayed Jesus Christ? Have you ever done something that you should not have done? Have you ever told a story you should not have told? Have you ever not done something you should have done? My friends, have you ever betrayed Jesus Christ? That's why the disciples were not sure which one. They were asking, is it me? Am I the one who's going to betray you? I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to that. And and they said to John, hey, you're next to him asking me. He says, the one who's dipping his hand in the, with the bread with me right now, he's the one. So we look at the evening. He says, the man may come back in the evening. Then the man may come back at midnight. Let's look at Mark 14.32. Mark 14.32. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit down here while I pray. I'm going to have to skip this story or jump ahead. Then he goes to Mark 37. And he came back, things happened. 
and found them sleeping. What did he say? Be awake, be alert, keep watch. And he came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Have you not the strength to keep awake and watch with me for one hour? In verse 38, keep awake and watch and pray constantly that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 4 to 1, now you can go home and read this, please. And he came back a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Then 42, get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So that was the midnight. They were there together in Gethsemane at midnight. And they were asleep. They couldn't stay awake. Are you awake? Is the church awake? Instead of standing on the promises, these disciples were sleeping on the premises. Are we sleeping in the church? Have we gone to sleep in the church? Are we in the church sleeping on the premises? Are we in the church sleeping on the job? Can we make a difference in this world? Is the world influencing the church or the church influencing the world? I'm so afraid we're losing this battle. We're caving in to the world. We're doing all the things that the world wants. We bring everything that the world wants that's evil into the church rather than taking the good from the church into a dark evil world. Advent is a great time to invite a friend to church. This is the time to bring a friend. We are all busy. We have decorations, Christmas trees. We have things going on. We have Christmas dinners. We, we have getting baskets ready for those who cannot help themselves and need a hand up. So in the evening, one betrayed him at midnight. They were asleep on the job. And he mentions the cock crow. What happened to the cock crow? Well, let's look at Mark Merrick, uh, 14, let's see, 71 and 72. Then Peter commenced invoking a curse on himself. And swearing, I do not know the man about whom you are talking. And at once, for the second time, a cock crowed. And Peter remembered how Jesus said to him, before a cock crows twice, you will deny me twice, three times. And having put his thought upon it, he broke down and wept aloud and went outside. Is that the cock crowing that Jesus Christ was talking about? The thing is, Peter utterly failed Jesus Christ at the wrong time. But you know what? We have a good God. God loves us. And God always gives us a second chance. We serve the God of the second chance. We serve a God who comes back and back and back again. No matter how we mess up, if we belong to him, he gives us that second chance. While it was evening, midnight, cock crow, the next one was the dawn. The man may come back at the dawn. My friends, the evening of betrayal, the midnight of sleep, the cock crow and the weeping, gnashing of teeth, and cursing and going out, all lead to the dawn of resurrection. At Advent, we await the dawn of Jesus Christ's return in victory. 
The return of Jesus Christ after the darkness. And let us look at the dawn, Matthew 16. Uh, Mark 16. Mark 16, 1 and 2. Mark 16, 1 and 2. And when the Sabbath was passed, that is after the sun had set, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, purchased sweet smelling spices so that they might go and anoint the body of Jesus Christ. And very early on the dawn of the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. The sun had just risen. I could uh, go on a little more with that story. And he said to them, the angel, do not be amazed and terrified. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. See the place where they're laid? But be going, tell the disciples and Peter, he goes before you into Galilee. And you will see him there just as he told you. Friends, that's the dawn we're all waiting for. The dawn when Jesus Christ will come back once again to claim this dark world. I urge you, I encourage you to keep on working for the kingdom. And right here in this church we do a great job of working for the kingdom. There is more power of the gospel than ever today. As the darkness increases, the light of Christ gets brighter and brighter. There is incredible power in the gospel and in the name of Jesus Christ. I urge you to turn to him right now to keep him foremost in your minds. My friends, during this Advent season, be alert, be awake, keep watch, be on guard. We do not know the hour nor the day nor the time, but the Son of Man will return. He will return. In the evening, he may return at midnight. He may return at cock crow, but he will return in the dawn. Be alert. Be awake. Keep watch. Now please turn with me to stand to him eight.
get that together. Our journey to Bethlehem has begun. And soon God's glory will be fully revealed. We watch, we wait, and we anticipate Christ's coming into our lives. May the light of God's glory shine bright in you in our lives. And may you seek to be the making of hope for those who walk in the darkness. We go from this house of God into the world of God's creation, beckoning others to the journey that only we can begin. Our time in your presence has revived and refreshed us. Allow this to move us forward into the world and our week with renewed passion for the work of your kingdom. Give us eyes to see where you're working, that we may readily join you. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.